Hi, my name is Miss Anna, and I'm the children's librarian at the Sims Township Public Library. And this is my daughter, Zoe. Hi there. Zoe and I wanted to share with you a fun game that we play in our family. It's called Spiral, and we found the directions at mathgeekmama.com. And since Zoe is 10, we're going to be doing multiplication. At the end, I'll share some different ways and modifications that you can use this with all members of your family. So the things that you're going to need are a deck of cards, uh, some kind of game piece. So we're using Lego pieces, but you could use a bead, you could use a button, you could use coins, all sorts of ideas. You're going to need a dice or two. Um, if you don't have a dice, you can make one with paper. You can download an app onto your phone, or Zoe's found that if you go into Google and you search Google Dice, then you have a virtual dice that you can always use. And there you go. So you're going to set up your game by taking every card and laying it out in a spiral, like this. Then you're going to put your game pieces in the center, just like that. That's the starting spot. The end is the very last card in the spiral. So. We figure out who gets to go first by figuring out who finished a book most recently. So, I finished a book three days ago. When did you last finish a book? Last night. This girl reads like crazy, so I just can't even compete. Zoe gets to go first. All right, Zoe, you're going to roll your dice. I got a four. All right. So I'm going to move Zoe, and I'm going to tell you how we play the game. So you're going to move your character, one, two, three, four, and you're going to take the number that's on the card, and you're going to multiply it by the number that you rolled. So she would take four times four, and if she got the answer right, she'd stay there. But if she got the answer wrong, she'd go back to the last card she was on. But four times four, or sorry, landing on a four and rolling a four creates a turbo move. So you want to tell them what the turbo move does? Sure. So if you get a turbo move, then you don't have to do the math for that turbo move that you get. But once you land on another one, if it's not another turbo move, then you have to do the math. But how a turbo, but like, so to do the turbo move, you have to roll and get, you get to roll again and go. So I got a four. One, two, three, four. I got another turbo move. So she doesn't have to do the math again. And I get to roll. And I got a one. Now, she just landed on a jack. A jack, a queen, and a king can either be tens, all tens, or so that I have a chance at winning this game, they can be 11, 12, 13s. So Zoe has to tell me what 11 times one is. That's easy. 11. Yeah, I'm going to lose this game. So she gets to stay there. If she had it wrong, she'd have to go back to the last card that she was on. All right, so it's my turn. I'm already losing. It's okay. I land. I rolled a four, so I get one, two, three, four. Yes, I got turbo. I'll roll again. Another four. One, two, three, four. Yes, turbo. Oh, I got a six. Zoe got lucky. One, two, three, four, five, six. I landed on a queen. 12 times 6. Hang on, this is hard. I have to actually think. Oh my gosh. I know this. Wasn't it 72? Didn't we just do this? Yeah, 72. Sorry, guys. I really have to think. I'm a librarian. All right. So I got a 70. I got 72. That's right. I'm staying there. One of the other fun elements of this game is if I had landed on the card that Zoe was on and I answered it correctly, she would have to go all the way back to the beginning. Not fun, but yeah, sad, but it's just a fun way to play the game. So you got to go all the way around the board a couple of times. When you get to the end, you have to land on the last card exactly. So if I'm three spots away, I have to roll a three. And then I have to answer the, uh, the last math equation correctly. And then I win the game. Or Zoe will win it. So it's a fun game. We really enjoy it. We're a little bit competitive, so we really make it fun. Now with our younger siblings that we have, we change it a little bit. We actually take out the king, queens, and jacks, and we just play with 
just these face cards, right? So with our preschooler, she is still learning how to count her numbers in order and how to identify what a number is. Um, so if she lands on a card, she has to identify the card. Um, with the kindergarten through second grade age, we do addition and subtraction so that you have to land and add, um, add or subtract your numbers. And then when Zoe gets a little bit older, maybe next year, she's actually gonna do integer math. So her black cards will be positive numbers and her red cards would be negative numbers. So this eight, if she landed on it with a five on her dice, it'd be eight times, sorry, negative eight times five equals negative 40. So there's lots of ways that you can play this game. We hope that you've gotten some great ideas and that you guys try it out and like it too. Have a great day.